Welcome to our current Business Builder Seminar. Uh, join us today for a deep dive into the art of creative storytelling and positioning. We uh, welcome Avie Chagante, who is the co-owner of ACCL Marketing. Uh, just a little bit of uh, information before we start. There'll be time for questions at the end, but if you ask your question um, and you, there's a, a place to put your question in, um, and I'll keep an eye on that, on questions in chat. Um, if you're asking something that is particularly um, important to, to interrupt Avia at that moment for some clarification, we'll do that too. But otherwise, we're gonna save those questions till the end. All right, so without further ado, I turn it over to Avye. Awesome, thank you, Nancy. Uh, as you mentioned today, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at some of uh, the creative storytelling and positioning in the social media and, and website world um, and how you know your business can kind of actively engage in some of these stories online without having it to be really too time consuming or confusing because as business owners, a lot of the day is spent um, Sorry about that. Am I still sharing? Ooh, one second. Sorry about that. Um, and a lot of the day is spent doing a lot of different tasks from things that might not necessarily be uh, needed for social media. So uh, today I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, kind of like some plans and ideas that'll help you really engage your audience online and also you know build a better experience overall so as we start here we'll start with a little bit of an agenda so the introduction um you know the power of storytelling and then crafting your story and then we'll talk a little bit about social media positioning strategic content building and i'll give you guys a case study to look at and then we'll also start talking a little bit about consistency in your storytelling and how to create a, uh, a schedule, and we'll wrap up with some questions at the end. Okay, so a little bit about me. So I'm one of the co-owners of ACCL Marketing. Um, my role really is to assist businesses in helping find their ad online identity. I work with businesses to help them create creative strategies and also really work on their storytelling aspects. So how content can be an effective tool for them and how they can really use that to grow a brand and audience online. Um, it's been uh, about five years since I've started the business with m one of my friends from college, and it's just been an awesome ride so far. We've really been able to play an integral role in a lot of small businesses, and it's it's just been really fun to help help business owners, you know, deeply understand social media and how they can make it work for them. So as we continue here, so I want to just talk a little bit about the power of storytelling and why it's really an important part of your business. So um online so starting with just three big topics it's engaging it's memorable and it's relatable so you know you can go into a little bit more detail engaging you want to grab their attention um through these kind of pieces of content whether it be graphics photos video but overall it kind of is a good way to get someone to look at your stuff and think about your business and even think about you personally what we like to tell business owners is try to make your followers or your audience fall more in love with you than your product because your product can always be changing but at a core, we want them to be buying and being supporting you, necessarily not your products. Um, there should be some sense of emotional connection as well. Um, you know, how you feel about the products and, and your business and what it means to you to have customers and things like that. And we also wanna increase the interactivity. So like, as people are seeing their, your content, you want them to get an opportunity to, you know, either communicate with you, relate with you, log onto your website, different opportunities for them to engage with you just so you can get a better idea on how you can engage with them as well. Uh, the memorability. So, you know, when they log off social media or they get off their phone for a little bit, you want that you want that piece of content to resonate with them. You want that to you know replay in their mind a little bit. So, how can you build these uh, ideas that that really make someone think about it for a long time and uh, also build that association with your brand. Say, you know, you're the business owner and you're taking a lot of content and videos of yourself and posting it online. It gives you an opportunity to basically build up some uh, memory with your potential customers. And, you know, as they're seeing those videos and they see things that they like, they're more likely to share that with people that they like and their friends and they can, they can then engage as well. 
um, people want to relate to brands, you know, especially now, like there's so many different brands online, people are constantly consuming content. You really want to break through that clutter by really being your true self and showing to businesses and your consumers, hey, um, you know, this is what it's like. This is a day to day in my business. This, is, you know, just give them more opportunity to really uh, understand who you are. And a lot of people you'll find can relate to that. You might even get messages saying like, oh, this is what my day to day is like, things like that. Um, and it'll just build a sense of trust and foster community building as well. So as we continue, uh, I like to take a little, you know, moment just to take about quotes. So, you know, a lot of the time marketing today is not necessarily about the stuff that you're selling, like I was talking about, but more of the stories that you tell. Uh, Seth Godin is an amazing marketer. He, he's a lot of great knowledge and books that he's shared in the past that can really, you know, help you get a deeper understanding of marketing and the trends in business today that can really help you engage and get a deeper idea of how, how marketing has been a, a part of, you know, the day-to-day -day life today. So, you know, when you're starting to think about a lot of these things, it's important to think about how these kind of uh, skills, again, such as storytelling and things are an important part of your business because you can really start to get a follower or someone like that be a real brand champion of your business so they're kind of speaking about your brand without having to constantly sell a product or a service to them so it's something to keep in mind so when you're crafting your story there's really like four topics we like to tell people to keep in mind so that they can just kind of flow naturally and the whole process can be rather intense but if you try to break it up into these four steps it can help you get a better idea and really give you a sense of the of what you're trying to say through your messaging. So, you know, first off, we want to identify what your actual message is. So what do you want to say to your audience and how, how do you want them to feel about you or your company? And, you know, this can come at different levels. You can start as simple as giving where you might not be on camera, where you're showing more, more of your products through video so that they can take a closer look. And um, or then you want, might want to even switch to gears and show them what it's like to be a business owner, the day in the life. It's really your story and how you want to capture it. It's mostly in the sense of, first off, start with what kind of message do you want to put out there on social media and how do you want people to resonate with your ideas? Once you kind of have that thought process of, OK, these are some of the ideas I'd like to talk about and this is some of the messaging I would like, let's start to develop it. Do you feel that this type of content really is complex? Do you see yourself being able to talk about this stuff for multiple months on end? Or do you think do you feel like after one to two to three, maybe even five posts, it kind of feels like that that might be the point where you need to switch gears? This is all really important to think about because if you find yourself that you're running out of content, you might feel the pressure to constantly try different things and do uh, do things that you might not want to do. But if you can learn to develop your ideas where you're starting different concepts as you as you go, you can see how complex you can get with them as well. Um, and the next step really would be like diversify your characters. So characters could be physical and non-physical. So that could be such as like attending a spe special place your business might have, say a warehouse, say uh, a different areas where you can you can show your viewer different aspects of your business so they can develop a deeper understanding of what it's like to uh you know be a day in the life of your business and also they can uh, get a deeper understanding of what you're offering to them so um being able to diversify your characters and showcase different aspects of who you of what your business can do really gives a good sense of your overall story and um can get can widen that sense of transparency as well it's important to remain open-minded obviously everything is kind of a test until you really start to find something that works for you finding your authentic voice is kind of a process so there's no foolproof way of really just putting out a message and expecting it to work it's more of a day-to-day -day process as you go um trying different things and seeing you know where you really fit and where your niche is and what what your uh, audience is asking for So positioning, you know, this is an important part of what we're talking about today. So you really want three factors to, to keep in mind when you're thinking about positioning. You really want to think about which platforms you prefer. Obviously now a lot of companies want to focus on everything, but as a smaller business or any size business, that does take up a lot of time. Um, so, you know, 
uh, a lot of time out of your day. And for a lot of business owners, it's not something that they want to be doing all the time. You know, they want to be able to create something that's good and put it out there and be able to connect with a few people that might resonate with their product. But, you know, if you can identify, say, I like Instagram better or I like LinkedIn better and, you know, you don't have to be set in that wind uh, that way forever. You could you could test different things like we talked about in the last slide, having a test process of, you know, say three months, six months at a time saying I'm going to try really actively be on Instagram for the next six months and really push an audience there and 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 track your results and see how you do. Um, once you kind of understand which platform tends to do better for you, you can you can really build it up and and work that way. Um, what type of content do you enjoy on a daily basis, right? So when you're researching through social media and you you know everyone really is on social media now as you're scrolling through things, what type of stuff do you see that you like and can you see yourself building stuff like that? Um, do you feel that it's something that you can resonate with. It's easy to relate to. It's content that you want to see on a regular basis. And what you can do is kind of start taking notes on this type of content about how you yourself can start making things like that. Um, and then from there, you know, test it out, try it out, uh, take a video, make a graphic. There's so many great tools online now with where you can try and put these things out there about what you want to try and just see how it does for you. Um, and the next thing is transparency. A lot of things that we're talking about here is really transparent and showing your customer a lot about your business. But that, that being said too, it's really how comfortable you would wanna be with showcasing who you are and how authentic you wanna be on social media. Uh, I'm not saying you have to show everything about your business, but you have to feel what makes you comfortable and you can grow naturally. You know, you don't have to show the full day in the life right from the start, but you can progress up to that point where you're starting to showcase more of you, of you, yourself, your partners, and how the business really works. And you can take it one step at a time. And the other thing to keep in mind is you deserve to have fun. So there's a fun little graphic uh, cartoon here from that I thought was funny. Uh, a lot of the times business owners feel that, you know, fun is only for children or, or kids. Uh, but you deserve to have fun too as business owners and social media is that one place where you can really have some fun and kind of be yourself. Um, you know, you don't want to obviously take it over to the top, but uh, try not to be too hard on yourself or take it too seriously. It's just a post on social media. If it doesn't do well, that's okay. Tomorrow is a new opportunity where you can try something different or you never really know. Once it's out there, it might take a week or two for someone to actually engage with it. So just keep having fun, keep creating and you never know what might actually stick for you. So strategic content building. This is kind of a nice plan to follow um, just so that you can stay on top of all the content that you have to create without it being too overwhelming. So, you know, what we like to do is try to break it down for a month timeline window and write all the ideas you wanna try and capture in one, one month. Try to start with something like a big topic and break it down kind of like a tree and say, from this big topic, how can I break this down and, and really get to where I need to be each step of the way so that in one month, I can maybe cover this one topic or solve this one problem. Um, so then the, after you kind of have that done, start thinking about how much of this can you realistically get done in one month or does it need to be spread out across two months? Realistically, what we try to tell customers is, about two to three posts a week are great for social media, but that could be tough to achieve too. So realistically, maybe we shoot for one post a week that's really solid that you feel comfortable and confident in putting out on social media. That's a great place to start and, and you can start to really track how you're doing there. And from that, you can learn to grow. So it's really one of the big things to keep in mind is not trying to get overwhelmed, but make sure you try to keep a good eye of how your content is doing and on, online. Um, and then you can start also thinking about what needs to be outsourced. It doesn't need to happen right away, say month one, but what, uh, you know, if you start to gain some traffic on one area that you're trying and it could, it could use the touch of a professional graphic designer or a professional videographer to really come in and create a piece for you that could resonate deeper. What areas do you think could, could do that for you and your business? So as you start putting out that type of content, Take notes of things that are performing better, and then maybe that could be an area, once you really start to build up some traffic, say more followers, more account traffic, then you can say, I need to outsource some of this work. 
and as I kind of mentioned as we're going through here, you want to log your progress, uh, not just for the analytics, but also for a personal personal goal. Um, it makes you feel good. Say on a monthly basis, you've built about 10 different pieces of content from say written, video, graphics. That's a lot of work and um, you should be proud of that work that you're able to showcase that much of your story on a monthly basis. Um, uh, as a business owner, you know, you wear a lot of different hats. It's tough, it can be tough at times to share that story, but you know, if you keep a log, it keeps things a lot more honest to yourself that you are trying very hard to get your business out there. And it's a tough, it's tough on social media. It's not like what it used to be 10, 15 years ago where you can make one post a month and it would be great. You know, there's a lot of people creating really great content. So, you know, just starting and just getting stuff out there is the right step in the right direction. So I wanted to showcase a quick case study um, based on some of the businesses closer to us in Massachusetts. But uh, this is about Vance and Leathers, their uh, heritage uh, leather company. Um, and uh, one of the things that I thought that was very interesting is that they do a really good job on Instagram showcasing some of their uh, products, their story, their business, and some of their messaging as well, which has helped them be you know, ultra successful in the, in the past couple of years through Instagram. They've done a lot of really great collaboration work with, say, the a lot of players on the Celtics and things like that. And um, a lot of it can be correlated back to some of the stuff that they're doing on social media. Um, you can check them out as well. It's nothing too crazy, but they're, what they're giving you is an authentic story about who they are and what they love to create. And again, they're consistent in their message, which allows people to engage with their brand. So a little bit deeper, you know, their ability to, to actively tell a story has helped their, you know, heritage brand collect almost 40,000 followers on Instagram and work with companies all across the world. And it, you know, it all started by just them deciding that they want to start putting their story out there on social media. I think it's pretty remarkable and something that we can all try to do as business owners to just be more active about sharing things as things might go. Uh, what might seem like common knowledge to you might not necessarily be common knowledge to a follower, right? So, you know, what you might think is an everyday part of your business might be new to them. So feel free to get your message out there more, share more about yourself, because it can really, you know, you might really find someone that might be interested in what you have to talk about. All right, consistency. So, again, all of this comes from being consistent. So you know, you really want to you want really want to take think about how much time you have on a day to day basis that you can dedicate to say social media and, and and how you can get out your message. You know, when you first get started, it might be overwhelming, but one of these things that might really help is building a calendar. So, you know, you want to build a calendar about release, but also a calendar about when you're going to make this content. And later in the show, we'll also talk about a good calendar schedule that I, we like to follow too. But this calendar really kind of keeps you um, keeps you honest and also gives you an opportunity to move things around and you can also gauge how quickly you can get things done based on work and your efforts. Obviously, it, it can be tough with your day-to-day -day schedule and things are constantly changing, but if you have a calendar and you start to see some results on social media, you might also make it a priority for you on a day-to-day -day basis that I need to spend 15 minutes a day making content or 25 minutes a day, or Friday is our dedicated content day where we're shooting and, and creating five to 10 pieces of content. Um, and then that kind of leads into the next point. You know, you, know, you want to start small. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew because you know, if in one month, say you put out 15 pieces of content and it's a great story and you're getting a lot of traffic, but the following month, you only have three to four posts that go out. It's not really that strong of a message if you can't keep that flow going all the time. Whereas if, say, in month one, you have a story where it has six posts a month, and the following month you have six to eight, the next month you have eight to ten, that shows a nice sense of consistency. And also, you're flowing naturally with your followers and your growth, and you're able to interact with them. A lot of the stuff that I've been talking about today is putting content out but also you wanna be able to connect and communicate with the people that might be commenting, sending you messages, emails, things like that. So obviously it's important to get things out, but the whole point of getting things out is that we can connect with more, more potential customers, right? So as you're putting that stuff out, make sure you're checking your messages, your message requests, things like that, just so 
you know, it's it. And what that really does is makes you more authentic. People, people can then relate to you more because you're actually taking the time out of your day to answer them, get back to them. And in reality, that's really the moments that social media can be a powerful tool for you to relate to business owners because you're taking the five minutes extra out of your day to answer their question on Instagram, or they sent you an email just wondering things. And more often than less, that that's really the opportunity to really gain a sale or a potential customer for your business. Um, the next thing to keep in mind too is, you know, say you start building this up and it's doing well for you. Um, it could be time for you guys to hire a professional as well. Outsourcing a lot of this work can free up more of your time, allow you to be more creative. And it, and it doesn't have to be the whole process. You could outsource a small portion of it, whether it be they're going to handle just the posting or they're going to handle just the content creation or really work with whoever you want in your outsourcing sense to see what could be a good fit for you and for them to kind of make your schedule work better and so that you're not constantly going from work to social media and you're kind of losing the sense of your authenticity because you're just kind of tired. Um, outsourcing allows you to keep that story and that message continuing because you can kind of rely on someone else to help you out too in times of need. And it's also great for creativity because in a way an outsourced uh, client or customer, sorry, a partner of your business, they are going to have a different viewpoint of it than you might. So they can give you insight based on what they're seeing on the internet. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about a schedule now um, based on what we spoke about in the uh, uh, last slide. So, you know, one to two days is really focused on strategy and calendar building. So what type of content are you going to focus on this month and what will the con and when will this content release? So again, like we talked about, try to try to na narrow it down one day on a, during the week where you're really just kind of hammering out your calendar about what you're going to get done this month. And then, you know, what you can do is kind of set, say, if I want to release this on Friday, I really need to get this created by Wednesday. So I need to lock down as Friday's release date, Wednesday is the creation date, and Thursday is the edit date. That kind of gives you, and you can kind of map out the window however you might feel comfortable, but it just keeps you honest and keeps you moving in the right direction. So once you have those days kind of labeled where this is when I want to release more of my story every time, uh, you want to get two to three days about ahead like we just spoke about just so you can at least create some of your content. So whether that be graphics, photos, videos. And again, if you look to outsource this, this might be an area where you need to get with um, someone that can uh, take that content. So you need to get on their calendar as well. So it's always good to think about at least two to three weeks in advance, and if not, one month in advance. Um, think about, especially now during the holidays, a lot of the things that we're talking about the holidays, you might wanna start thinking about two weeks in advance, right? So if you don't have your holiday content done, this week might be the week to get a lot of it done. Um, a lot of your messaging, talking about how you thankful you are for the holiday season, some of the holiday sales you might be having, things like that are good topics right around this time of the year to really start getting back to. And then scheduling posts. So there's two opportunities. You can schedule everything for you to go out and you don't have to worry about it and it's just out there. Or you can also look to live post things. They both have their benefits. It's just really what you're comfortable with. Me personally, I use a mix of both. I schedule a lot of content, but I also like to post some things live just so I can take a look at it as it goes out. Um, and once you kind of have that schedule in your mind, you can start to see how your day is gonna get laid out. Do you have 15 minutes spin between lunch, 20 minutes before you go home? Usually the windows, think about in a day-to-day -day when you wanna release content, right? Most of the time, a lot of people are looking at their phone during their lunch break, and they're also looking at their phone when they get home from work. So anywhere from that 11 to 1 schedule is always good, 11 to 2 sometimes. And then again, again, on a database basis, uh, that 3 to 5 and then 5 to 7 area looks good as well, depending on when people end their day. Um, and then review. So again, you want to keep track of how your content is performing and what areas you could improve on, um, but you can really take notes and you know all these social media platforms provide good analytics at this point for you to understand what demographics you're uh, interacting with the most, how they're performing and things like that. So you can really get an understanding of how your content is doing. And then on a month to month basis, 
you can decide. Do you want to make changes now? Would you like to see another month and see how it does? Um, you know, do you want to introduce new topics? The cool part about it is that you can consistently change or even keep adapting based on how you're performing. So that's a good reason to kind of look at how things have been going. So this is a good kind of plan for you to follow just so you can keep track of everything. And that will kind of wrap up our, our as far as our process today. But a lot of the things, again, like I'd, like I'd like to wrap up with is talking about, again, your story and your positioning, right? So the big factors from today to keep in mind is try to keep, start, start small with the day-to-day -day life about things that stand out to you. Not necessarily have to be the most meaningful, most crazy uh, uh, operations within your business, but just something that's easy for you to talk about and just record yourself talking about it. Then see if you can look to get that out on social media and see how you can consistently do that. It really will make a drastic impact if you're able to showcase more about your business, your day-to-day -day life, and how you can relate to other consumers and things like that. From there, you can look to build on things and you know consistently grow your message, but take it one day at a time. Social media is a really useful tool for businesses, but it's always important to try and see how you can take make the most of it with the tools that you have at, available to you. Um, but yeah, Thanks, thank Bobby. you. Um, I'm watching for uh, to see if there are any other questions here, but I, I had a couple that came up um, throughout the presentation. And um, you mentioned several times the uh, getting your authentic voice or finding your authentic voice. And um, how do we know when we found it? I mean, what are we looking for? Yeah, that's a great question. So. Again, authentic voice to me and makes sense to me the most is what do you feel comfortable sharing, right? Like if you were to do a video shoot, Nancy, or you were about to get on camera or you were about to make a graphic, what naturally flows with your business and how you're speaking about your business? Where do you see that you feel the most confident in the type of content that you're putting out there, right? That kind of correlates back to your authentic voice. Again, it's a process because oftentimes when you first get out there, you're always thinking consumer first or sales first, right? But in reality, like we talked about, the consumer wants to buy from someone that they can trust and that they can enjoy their experience with. So if you are just being yourself and talking about why you started this business, why you love this business, why it means so much to you, that for a consumer might be more interesting than you might ever think. So showcasing stories say, this is why I started, or this is why I love this, or this is how our day-to-day -day goes, or this is what's important to me, can all be different ways about you finding your authentic voice and how you can deeply correlate with your customers. Okay. Um, we have another that uh, talks about tracking results. So uh, that's another thing. Uh, when things are, um, I'm trying to think of the words you use, but when you said like, when you're successful with something, um, but how do you measure that? How do you measure right. when something is performing well? Right, so it, it depends on the type of content and also what some of the goals you might have from that goal, that piece of content. But one thing you wanna take a look at is, do I have a lot of page views? Am I gaining followers? And is my website visits or my call log going up? Those are some good metrics to keep in mind when you're when you're trying to build up your audience. And also the other thing, like a lot of people say, take a look at your impressions too. But I like to say, think about how many likes and look at the quality of your likes that you're getting. Is it people in your community? Is it a potential customer? The cool part for a business owner is you can actually take a look at all that information just by clicking on the view analytics of your post or and then you can get a better idea. I'm doing well in this area. I'm gaining traffic in that, I'm getting more views from this age group, this demographic of people. And what you can do is you can start to get a better understanding. And also the ability to add your website to social media is a great way for say, if you have a fill out form on your website, things like that, you could see how many form fill outs you had in that month. Did it increase from the last month where maybe you weren't doing content or less content? And you know that's a good way to keep track of a lot of stuff. So think about, how many followers you're gaining, how many page views you have, and how many website uh, clicks you're getting. Okay, here's a question that you're gonna love, Avier. 
Um, <laughs> what if you don't have time to manage your business and the social media? Are there companies that we can hire? Yes, uh, um, <laughs> if I may, <laughs> ECCO Marketing, we, we that's one of the stuff that we do, um, a lot of content management, so we can work with you. There's a whole bunch of businesses that are great out there. It's, you know, right now it's it's an interesting market. There's a lot of businesses that offer a lot of great resources. Um, one thing to keep in mind is try and communicate with someone that makes sense for you. There's big agencies, there's small agencies. For example, our team is mostly about five people. So when you're speaking with me, yes, you're speaking with the owner of the business, but I'm also the client manager. I also do a lot of the content creation. So it's like, it really makes sense to see what, how much level of communication you want to have, say, with that potential person that you onboard. Um, there can be someone that takes care of everything from top to bottom. That would be, say, creating content, uh, managing your calendar, posting for you, and tracking your analytics, building your website, things like that. Some of the uh, some of the services that we offer. Um, and then it could be as simple as maybe even bringing someone on to your staff and having them say, you're going to manage our social media. Um, so it's really just what you're comfortable with and as far as what you're looking to spend and who you find comfortable. But there's plenty, plenty of resources out there as far as businesses that can help with that kind of stuff. And um, I'll include Avi's contact information it's in his presentation, which I'll be sharing with everyone that's uh, been on today, as well as the um, the video. So, uh, but his contact information will be in there. Yep. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for the questions. Uh, thank you so much, Avier. It was a great presentation. Um, anything that else that you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I, I would just like to say, like, um, you know, especially in this world now where a lot of people are saying that, like, you have to do this, you have to do that social media wise. I think what's really important for a business owner is to start to think about what's really important to them um, and seeing how actively they can engage an audience online. Right. There is no half. There's no rules when it comes to social media. Obviously, you want to put out quality content, things like that. But as far as your story building aspect, you want to try and really get down to what's important to you and how can you share that message in an active way. So, you know, if it's finding that within yourself through some taking some time with your team or that's outsourcing that strategy aspect, really start to think about that stuff as we roll into the new year. What are some of the big goals you're looking for in 2024 and how can social media play an active role in helping you get to those goals? So, you know, as we go into this new year, it's an excellent time to start kind of thinking of how did 23 go for me? What are some of my big goals for 24 and how am I going to get there? So, you know, that's my main my main point that I'd like to end with for today. OK, well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for your attention. Um, you'll be hearing from us. We'll get that recording and the presentation uh, materials out to you uh, as soon as we can and um keep in touch let us know if there are any other topics that are uh, of particular uh, interest to you and we'll try to find someone that um, is expert in that area that will be uh, our next presenter in a business builder seminar thank you and have awesome. a great thank day you. thank you everyone